Welcome to another video. This is a definite integral involving the floor function. Now, this would be super easy if this was not a floor function, it was just x, because you just integrate it normally. But this requires a tiny little twist, which I'm going to explain. But let me just show you what you're supposed to do if you see this. All you have to do is separate the integrals. Just as you know, we can do this. This is equal to the integral from 1 to 5 of 5 dx minus the integral from 1 to 5 of the floor function of x, the floor of x dx. So if we integrate this, this is going to be 5x evaluated from 1 to 5 minus if you want to integrate this, your answer is going to be x squared minus x divided by 2, evaluated from 1 to 5. Now, I know you have a lot of questions. That's why I'm making this video. I'm going to explain to you how this came about. But let's finish this. If we evaluate this, this is going to be 5 times. This is going to be 25 minus 5 minus if we evaluate this this is going to be if you put 5 here it's going to be 25 minus 5 that's 20 divided by 2 which is 10 okay and it's going to be plus no minus now let's do minus here okay because this parenthesis is still here and this is going to be minus if you plug in 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so what's our answer our answer is going to be 20 minus 10, which is equal to 10. So the answer to this integral is actually 10. After evaluating this, you get here. This is what you're going to get. OK, how did I get to this point? Because this actually is the crux of the entire video. Well, if you're still watching, you're interested. Let's get into it. If you recall this from your pre-calculus days, that, let me write it, recall, that 1 plus 2 plus plop, 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 plop to n, this is the sum of the first n integers will be equal to what? There's a formula that you used. Remember when you did Riemann sums also, this is it, the sum of the first n terms. So if you want to add the first 10 numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 to 10, what would your answer be? To be 55, right? How do you get 55 using a formula? Well, you just have to say it's 10 plus 10 times 11 divided by 2. Remember, it's going to be equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. This is the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers, starting from 1. Okay, now this is what we need to modify. Because unfortunately, when you have a floor function, something is killed. There's something that is just not showing up. And it is the very first rectangle in your Riemann sum. Okay, I'm going to explain. Just hold on. Let's modify this. Okay, replacing. Replacing n with x minus 1. I'm going to explain why it becomes x minus 1 very soon. But let's just replace this with x minus 1, then the sum, remember that every time we do integration, we're actually adding up strips of areas, okay? So there's going to be the first area, then the second area, until we get here. But unfortunately, we're not going to get n areas. We're going to get n minus 1 areas. But I just decided to represent it as x minus 1. So let's see this, see what happens. If you go from, so 1 plus 2 plus, pop, 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 plus, instead of writing n, I'm going to write x minus 1, and it's going to be equal to x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. What do you think that means? That means the formula that I just gave you that we used here, because now this is going to be equal to x minus 1 plus 1 is just x. 
right? So this is going to be x minus 1 times x divided by 2, which is the same thing as x squared minus x over 2. That's what you see here. That's what you get whenever you have the integral, the definite integral, no, the integral of the floor function of x, just x. Okay, let me explain how we came about that. Let's say this, consider f of x is equal to x. This is the function that you have. You know what the graph of this looks like? Yeah, this graph is gonna look like this. It's gonna go like this, straight up at 45 degrees. So that when this is one, this also will be one. When this is two, this also will be two. So it's called the identity function because whatever you put in is what you get out. F of x is x, right? So the y is the same thing as the x. Unfortunately for the floor function, what you put in is not what you get. You always get less than what you put in unless what you put in is an integer. So remember that. So if I put in anything less than one, I'm not gonna get one, I'm gonna get zero. So the first, and by the way, remember that you can find the area under this line by just constructing a triangle and finding the area of the triangle is the same thing as integrating this for whatever length you want it to be. So now, from here, you're gonna have x, f of x if it is the floor function. So let's change it. Let's change it now to the floor function. If it is the floor function, this is the only point where this is gonna happen. Before you get to this point, you see this part that is leaning here is gonna be down here because you're not allowed to gradually move up. You must move by a jump. So everything here, everything here is flat here because the floor of a function is basically the largest integer that is less than or equal to the value of your input. So let's put that definition somewhere. Okay, I cleaned up the definition right there. The floor of any value, the floor of x, is the largest integer such that that integer is less than or equal to x. So the floor of 9 has to be 9 because that is the largest integer that is less than or equal to 9. Remember, or means one of them has to be true and we're good. So the floor of 0 0.7 is 0 because 0 is the largest integer less than 0 0.7. So any number before you get to 1 is just flat here. But when you go get to 1, you're going to get this. But remember, we're not allowed to be inclined. Everything stays flat. So if you go from 1 to 2, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.99999 is still flat. You can't go up until you get to an integer then, sorry, until you get to an integer, then you jump up. So this is empty. You jump up here, and this inclined part has to be deleted. So all the inclined parts get deleted until you get to the very end. So assuming you're going to 7, you're only going to have 6 of these because the very first step has deleted one of your rectangles. So by the time you take the Riemann sum, you're not going to have seven rectangles. So let's use n. So if you have dotted, you get to n rectangles. I'm going to write n here. Instead of you having one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles, n rectangles, no, you're going to be having one less rectangle because we have eliminated the very first one. And that's why our formula that I was showing you will not be from the first rectangle to the nth rectangle. It will be from the first to the n minus one rectangle because we've lost one rectangle at the beginning. And that's why we needed to modify the formula. Instead of it being n times n plus one, it became 
n minus 1 times n, which is what we have rewritten this way. This one is always gone. Remember that. It's never there. So 10 will not work. Even if you think it's supposed to be 10, no, you're only going to have 9 rectangles because the first one is gone. So here, that's what you have. This stays like this. There's, a, there's an empty hole. So we delete that. And this jumps up again. And there's an empty hole. And it comes down. And then it keeps going like that until we get to the final one. Let's get rid of these steps. So this is what happens. The area of the very first rectangle is zero because the length is one, the gap from here to is one, but the height is zero, so this is zero. The area of the second rectangle is one because this height is one, this is one, so this is one. The area of the second rectangle is, you see, between two and three, this is one times two, this is two. So you can see that the number of rectangles is basically the area, which is just numbers, counting numbers from one to whatever you're going. So it's one plus two, this one, the area of this is going to be three, the area of the next one four, until the area of the last one is going to be n. So at the end of the day, your integral, remember from our Riemann sums, the integral of x starting from one, or whatever you're starting from, let's say you're starting from zero to n, let's say you're going from zero to n, dx is basically the sum of all the rectangles. But you notice that the rectangles you're going to be getting will be one short, okay? So you'll be going from the first one plus. So remember, whatever n is, you are crashing down. You're losing something. Um, you have this to be equal to n into n plus 1 over 2, but this will now be equal to x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to this formula here, ultimately. So whenever you see a floor function, especially this linear floor function, this is what you must recall for the integration. Just integrate it by replacing it with this, and then you can evaluate whatever it is. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.